Welcome back to Patrick Christie tonight. Now, as I revealed earlier, an exclusive poll for GB News and the Daily Mail has the Tories on track for essentially an election wipeout on the 4th of July. The exclusive figures indicate substantial Labour landslide, with Sir Keir Starmer winning 493 seats, the Tories down on 72, the Lib Dems on 39, the SNP on 22 as well. Uh, that forecast Labour victory will be larger than Tony Blair's landslide in 97, and only those 72 seats for the Tories would be their worst result since at least 1900, apparently. Uh, there is also the percentages of voting intention as well, which has the Tories on 19%, Labour on 46 the Lib Dems on 10%, but potentially with 39 seats, Reform on 12%, with potentially no seats, by the way. Uh, the Greens there on 8 as well, and the SNP on 3. Let's cross over now to Conservative candidate Tobias Elwood to get his hot take on, on this. Tobias, that must make for grim reading. I mean, you know, what do you do about that? How do you turn that around? Well, uh, interestingly, good evening. It's interesting you didn't mention the number of people yet to make their mind up, the don't knows. And a big observation about this election is that there's a substantial amount of the British electorate still waiting to see. No doubt about it, it's been a turbulent time in British politics, both nationally, uh, internationally and politically as well. But we have moved into much calmer waters. We're back showing, uh, illustrating uh, fiscal responsibility under Rishi Sunak. But we've still got to regain that trust with the British people. And it's that 20 percent of the electorate that have yet to make their minds up, that are not included in your polls, that can actually things, see things tighten completely. You could go back in time as well. You look at some of the polling that was taking place prior to Tony Blair winning in 1997, and they reflected similar polling results as you're now reading out this evening. So I think there's all to play for. We've seen the good thing about general election mm. campaigns is that it exposes light, it exposes um, a bit of uh, scrutiny on what Labour actually stands for, and uh, that yeah, I mean, gives the electorate 18, a better 18, judgment as to what to do. 18 Cabinet members would lose their seats under this. Oliver Dowden, James Cleverley, Grant Shapps, Penny Morden, Kemi Badenoch. I mean, these are big hitters. Esther McVeigh. You know, was Rishi Sunak wrong to call this election? Again, you're trying to justify the polling as if that is the result. We're not mm. there yet. You know, the election is on the 4th of July, not today. So, you know, you can read out your list of grandees, big names, the beasts that will fall. Let's wait to see what actually happens. There's been a lot of electioneering to mm. take place. And like I said, there's 20 percent of the electorate, a fifth of the voters yet to make up their minds. So they're going to listen very carefully to the arguments on both sides. It will come down as so often about who are going to be the best custodians of our economy. This is what Clinton said. It's the economy, stupid. Who's going to take Britain forward, particularly in these ever turbulent times? Okay. That's the question that people answer on the 4th of July, not today. OK, well, hey, something that no doubt you will feel a bit more comfortable talking about is the government has announced plans to increase UK defence spending to 2.5% of national income by 2030. All right. Uh, do you think this is, this is, this is the result of, of uh, the poll that was conducted within this poll, right, by the way? So do you think this is too much, too little or about right? Too little, 23%. About right, 25%. Uh, too much, 15%, don't know, 35%. So the don't knows have it again there, to, to emphasize your point, to be fair. But about right is the second biggest, which is 25%. Uh, so it appears, then, that maybe the Conservatives are doing something right there. Um, well, it's not just, uh, I think, the Conservatives. It's the whole of Europe is recognizing that, as you and I, in fact, have discussed on many occasions, our world's entered a new era of insecurity, and we've got to wake up to that. We've got to start to stand up and defend what we believe in, because there are uh, alliances forming, authoritarian states rearming, regrouping, that are challenging our global order. And it is Britain that does normally step up to the plate, perhaps when others hesitate. What we're seeing in Ukraine is very, very worrying indeed. Ukraine is now having to defend rather than attack. Russia is on the forefront outgunning Ukraine five to one, and our call to rekindle some form of national service is a reflection that the world is getting more dangerous, not less. And I think that's actually reflective well, ever is, more is, so. Is that a sign that maybe this national service thing is actually with one eye on the fact that we might have a world war soon? Well, uh, the fact that I then raised this, I took my defence committee to Finland and to Sweden, to other places where they have a whole of society approach to 
defending their country. You can't keep a standing army, a large standing army uh, at re high readiness for you know, any length of time. It's too costly. Therefore, we need to be prepared to upscale at short notice okay. when the threat picture changes. Uh -huh. That's what national service is all about. Now, it doesn't have to be necessarily be with the military. It can be with other aspects of our services. Nonetheless, it's us preparing okay. for an ever-changing, ever more contested world, more polarized world. Look what's happening in America. They're right. retreating from the global stage. What's happening in Europe is that security situation is getting worse and our security and our economy are symbi symbiotically entwined. If one goes bad, so does the other. OK. Um, now, look, it was only on Monday that longtime LBC presenter Ian Dale announced his decision to quit the radio station and instead enter politics. Now, this isn't a moment I saw coming until just a few days ago, but I need to let you know that this will be my last show on LBC for the foreseeable future. You know how much politics means to me, and if you've listened for any length of time, you know I've always had two ambitions in life. One was to be a radio presenter, and the other was to be an MP. But now I'm putting my hat in the ring again to be a candidate at the general election. Well, then, uh, four days later... He's abandoned his bid to become a Tory MP after a clip emerged of him criticising Tunbridge Wells, which was the constituency he hoped to run in. I've never liked the place, um, still don't, and would, ha would happily live somewhere else. And then he appeared on LBC with Nick Ferrari to announce his swift exit. There's a context to it, but nobody's interested in con context or nuance in these situations. You just have that little clip, and that would be on every single Lib Dem leaflet that was put out in the election campaign. But I decided on when... Uh, look, Tobias, it does make the Tory selection process look a little bit ropey, to say the least, doesn't it? No, not at all. I just think that's your reflection of the state of politics today. You know, we want good people to step forward into politics. And Ian Dale is a good person. And he said something wrong, absolutely right, and he was caught out for it. He's put his hand up. But, you know, we talk about Britain making the, the big decisions, getting our economy into the right place. When we talk about Britain moving in the right place, that we're talking about government. And if we're talking about government, we're talking about parliament. If we're talking about parliament, we're talking about parliamentarians. If we're talking about parliamentarians, we're talking about good British people stepping forward into the limelight, wanting to stand as candidates. And if the more we put people off, the more we over scrutinize, the more we criticize those who step forward into public service, then we will not get the great and the good to enter politics. And that will be to the, I think, to the, uh, the demise of, of Britain being able to play its role on the international right. stage and make wise domestic decisions. I, I have to say, when I came into politics in 2005, compared with today, it is very different indeed. It's All very right. brutal. It's very hostile. Very, very aggressive indeed. I'm not surprised. So many people are put off mm. to coming into politics. And as I say, that's to the detriment mm. of Britain making good decisions. All, all right, look, Tobias, thank you very much for your time this evening. That's Tobias Elwood there, live from Bournemouth. All right, look.